everyone and welcome back to the books are everywhere. So welcome to another vlog. I thought I would vlog this week because it's a big week for me, it's a big week for the UK and I thought it'd be an interesting thing to kind of take you through. Excuse the tractor driving down the road but um so basically yesterday was April 12th and that was the first day for us to reopen non-essential shops and to have haircuts, had my haircut, and to go to the gyms and zoos and things like that. So it's been a big day already yesterday and it also means that I am back at work now because I work in a bookshop so I was back today for the first day. I've literally just walked in the door and got home. It was actually a lot better than I expected it to be. I thought maybe we might be really busy and it was kind of steady. It wasn't like massively busy, but it was like steady all day. Um, I have been very anxious about going back to work. So it's very nice to get the first shift kind of done. We didn't really have any like horrible customers today. So it was nice and I'm glad that I had a good first day back because it's made me feel a lot better and more confident about going back to work. So very happy about that. I also had some post at work and I got sent the cousins by Penguin. I'm presuming this was sent months ago because this has been out for a while now but obviously because we've been shut for the past four months the postman has been saving up posts post for us so I just got this one today so thank you Penguin for sending me this. I absolutely love Karen M. Manis's books so I was very excited to be able to request a copy um, and they sent me a finished copy so that's very nice. So this one is a YA thriller um, from Karen M. McManus. So she writes, one of us is lying, one of us is next, and who can keep a secret, which is my favourite book by her. So this one says, the story family, the story family, it's a great name. <laughs> the story family are the envy of their neighbours, rich, beautiful, and glamorous, until it all falls apart. The four children are suddenly dropped by their mother with a single sentence, you know what you did. They never hear from her again. Years later, when cousins Aubrey Millie and Jonah Story receive a mysterious invitation to spend their summer, the, sp the summer at their grandmother's resort, they have no choice but to follow their curiosity and meet the woman who's been such an enigma their entire lives. The teenagers are determined to discover the truth, but some secrets are better left alone. That sounds really good. I really like um, YA thrillers, so I'm really excited for this one, and I'm sure we'll get to it hopefully soon. So. As an introduction to this vlog, I'm going to take you through what I'm currently reading, which is three books. So I'm currently reading War Storm, which is the last Red Queen book, and this I am listening to on audiobook when I'm running and when I'm driving. So I am currently about a quarter of the way through this. God, not even a quarter. It is a thick book. Um, so yeah, I'm about probably about 200 pages in because I haven't moved my bookmark, but yeah, I've been listening to it today. I'm enjoying this. I have enjoyed the, the whole series, but I'm finding this one the most confusing. Like it's got very political and there is just so many characters all across the world and all of the points of view keeps changing. And I'm just a little bit like thrown by it. And I think because I've been a bit anxious the past few days, I've not really been listening as intently as I should be. And I think that's probably why it's thrown me a bit, but I am still enjoying this book and it is very thick. So I'm glad I'm listening to it on audiobook. So I'm also reading Reaper at the Gates and this is the third book in the An Ember in the Ashes series. So me and Alex have been buddy reading these books over the last few weeks and I'm really, really enjoying this series. I'm really enjoying this book. We are only about 60 pages in so far, but this is a really good fantasy series, really enjoying it. And we're gonna be buddy reading this over the next um, seven days, so. That is exciting. And the last book I am currently reading is The Near Witch by V.E. Schwab. So this is my second, third V.E. Schwab book. I read Addie LaRue back in November and or Dece December and I absolutely adored it. So I picked this one up when it came out because there was a republished version I think last year and I absolutely love this sprayed, these sprayed pages. And I am really enjoying this. It is definitely reminiscent of Addie LaRue and the writing in Addie LaRue. It's very kind of mystical and whimsical, which I'm really loving. So this is about the town or the village of Nia, which is on a moor. And basically there is a stranger that has arrived onto the moor. And the main character, Lexi, is kind of discovering who this stranger is. And while this happens, there are children going missing. And there is a 
mystery about the stranger and who is the stranger and is he connected to the children going missing and is this connected to the near witch which is a legend about a witch that used to live in their village um so it's very interesting i'm really enjoying it i'm just finding it very slow to read and i think that's partly because of the schwab's writing it's very kind of location heavy and it's very um detailed which I really really love about her writing but it's not really the kind of writing to skim not skim but like speed through um so I'm finding that I want to kind of spend myself my time immersed in the story and not try and like get through it quickly but I am really really enjoying this so I've probably been reading this for about a week now or something uh, because I'm just reading it as kind of my third book when I've finished my pages for the day on other books so I am really enjoying that one so yeah, that is my reading update, my current reads, um, and I am no doubt will be reading more later in the week and probably have some book mail to show you, hopefully. But yeah, um, so this is Tuesday, first day back at work, which went really well, and that is really nice, and I will update you tomorrow, if not before. So it's only about, I don't know, just over an hour since I updated you last, or a couple hours, but I just wanted to drop in again because um, so I've done some ring fit, I've had dinner, and I've also been watching David Baddiel talk about kind of his new book. Um, so he is a comedian, he also writes children's books, and he has written a book called Jews Don't Count recently, which my boyfriend has read and he has a review on my blog which I will put in the description if you want to read that review which is really good but um so we've been watching remotely this um talk that he is doing right now and I've just found it really really interesting and I just wanted to kind of mention that that's what I was doing that's what I was watching because I think it's worth kind of talking about this more um and the main takeaway that I've got from this talk is basically that you know <sighs> We don't talk about anything enough. We don't talk about the problems that black people go through enough. You know, we don't talk about important things as much as we need to talk about them. But anti-Semitism in particular is something that really, really we dismiss. Um, and it's something that I am grossly uneducated about. And I feel like this talk has brought that to the forefront of my mind and it was just something that I wanted to address that I definitely think it's something we should talk about more um, and I am definitely going to be reading the book which I, I wanted to read the book anyway but just this discussion that they've had tonight has been so fascinating but um, has definitely just made it made me realise that this is a real issue and we don't talk about it um, and you just don't really see a lot about it, and I think that's that's awful. Um, and I, as I said, I'm I'm so uneducated about um, about it that yeah, I'm definitely going to be reading Jews Don't Count very soon. Um, I'm borrowing it from Mark so I can read it as well, and uh, you know write my write my own review of it. But yeah, I mean, I really just wanted to kind of pop in and say you know, it's just something that's really made me realise a lot um and I'm really glad that I joined this talk tonight <laughs> um to educate me a little bit more than I was an hour ago um so yeah I'm gonna I'm gonna head off now um but yeah I just thought this was an important thing to share Welcome to Wednesday. I've had a class this morning um, remotely for uni and I have just been for a run and something exciting arrived in this very big box that is probably too big for what's actually in there. Um, but yeah, I'm very excited because 
this is something I've been really looking forward to and I think I have three editions coming but one of them isn't due to arrive until about July um but this one I'm just gonna unbox it and tell you instead of telling you what it is I'm gonna show you what it is having thoroughly destroyed this box we got the book <laughs> So this is the Illuma Crate Edition of Rule of Walls by Lee Bardugo. I didn't manage to get the um, Illuma Crate Edition of King of Stars, but I have the Waterstones Edition. And this kind of matches the normal hardback of Rule of Wolves, and then it has red, beautiful red spade, sprayed pages. Spade pages? And then it has this letter from the author inside and this oh my god it's so beautiful this really beautiful design on the under the dust jacket naked hardcover this is so so beautiful i'm actually going to get the um standard hardback i say standard it's the waterstones edition but i think all of the hardbacks are the same i'm going to get it off my shelf so we can compare these two books Okay, so I think the dust jackets are the same. Yeah, I think they're the same. But then underneath the dust jackets. We have the same design, but the red one and the grey one. I expected this to be darker, um, but it's like kind of a white grey, like it's a light grey colour. These are so, so beautiful. These are like, oh, look at them together. They're so pretty. And they're babies. I love them. Love them. Oh, and this one has a quote on the side of it as well. So the Illumicrate one says we're all monsters now. So pretty. So glad I bought this. And look, they're both just plain on the back. I think, Let's see if there's anything inside. I don't think the Illumicrate one is signed. Don't know. I think my Waterstones one is. Yeah. So that's really nice. I'm very, very glad I got these because they're very free. And now I just have to find a space for it on my shelf, which my shelf, that is the shelf that I'll show you in a minute just there, is mainly Lee Bardugo books now, and that's only the hardbacks that I own. And I looked at it yesterday and was like, it doesn't feel like she has enough books out for me to almost have a full shelf of Lee Bardugo books. But I'm not complaining, it's a very nice shelf. Her books are absolutely drop dead gorgeous, so I'm gonna try and add another one to the collection. Um, so yeah, I have been reading A Reaper at the Gates today. I am really enjoying this, but I feel like I'm a little bit disconnected to it compared to the first two books in the series. I don't know if that's just me being a bit distant at the moment, and I think also because I'm reading three fantasies, I'm getting a little bit like, confused between all of them, and I'm just struggling to follow a large cast of characters in every book. Um, so I think part of that is because of that but I, I feel like I am enjoying this one slightly less and it does feel like there's a lot more people to remember and to like keep up with other than that I am still really enjoying it and I still feel like this is such an easy read which is something that really shocked me about the series so far but still enjoying it so yeah, I'm reading that I also um, read some of Warstorm on my run today which I actually found much better running, so I don't know whether it's just a driving thing that I've been struggling to drive and listen to Warstorm in particular, or maybe because I haven't done that for a while, I'm just a bit out of touch with it. So I definitely found running, I could concentrate more than driving, which was a shock, but a nice surprise. Because I definitely found that I was focusing on the story a lot more, so that was nice. So that is my reading update for today. I've ordered a lot of books today, like I don't know what's happened with today. <laughs> I'm not going to spoil the books that I ordered, although I'm trying to think what is actually coming soon. 
So it feels like I've ordered a lot, but not all of them were for me. And that's all I'm going to say because I don't want to spoil things. But um, I also have ordered some for myself and I can't even remember, honestly, what some of those books were now. But I definitely have ordered the Fairy Loot edition of XOXO, which looks amazing. And I have ordered myself another hardback of A Court of Thorns and Roses because I found one on Goodwill um, that was quite cheap and I'm very very worried that my other one is not going to arrive now because it's been a long time since that was shipped so I'm a little bit worried about that and also my friend wants hardbacks so I'm just gonna have you know if, if I end up with two then they will go to one will go to Amy so that's fine. I also I remember I also <laughs> managed to grab a hardback copy of Strange the Dreamer which I'm so happy about because it wasn't massively expensive and I have eBay notifications on for for it and one came up today because I really wanted the hardback UK editions. One came up this morning that wasn't massively expensive compared to what they're selling for at the moment so I nabbed that. So those are some of the books I ordered today. I feel like I've ordered more, but as I said, not all of them were for me, so maybe I'm just thinking of those. But yeah, I click and collected one for the weekend as well, so I probably will show you that book when I get it on Saturday, because I'm quite excited about that. Anyway, I'm going to try and fit these on my shelves now. So wish me luck and I will update you in a bit. Um, I'm seeing Courtney outside this afternoon, so we can do that here, and um, I'm going to make dinner for us both. So I'm going to get started on that in a minute, so I'll probably take you along for the ride on that afternoon as well. So I'll speak to you in a bit. So I've just finished The Near Witch by V. Schwab. I didn't expect to finish it tonight. Um, I've read just over 100 pages this evening because I had a really long bath and then yeah, I've just been reading this evening. Um, this is a weird one because although I've finished The Near Witch, there is still like 50 pages left of the book because it has um, The Ashbourne Boy at the back, which is a short story, which I don't know if that relates to um, The Near Witch in any way but I am going to go on and read that, um, maybe partly tonight and partly tomorrow and finish the book properly, but I just wanted to give some thoughts on The Near Witch. I was a little bit hesitant going into this because I've only read Addie LaRue and City of Ghosts by V. Schwab, and I loved both of them, but I was a bit hesitant knowing this would be very different, and it was very different, but it was also very reminiscent of her writing, and there is something that she said recently which me and my, my colleague told me, is that she really picks every word and you can tell. So I really liked that. Um, I also really liked the location of this. I found it a bit creepier than I expected it to be, um, especially reading it at night, but I also really enjoyed the atmosphere. There is... V. Schwab does atmosphere, like, really well, um, and this has an amazing atmosphere to it. But the only thing that disappointed me was I didn't feel... A connection to the characters that I kind of wanted to feel. Um, I felt like I was craving a little bit more of connection to them and the ending kind of felt a little bit rushed but I did really really enjoy this in spite of those very small things. So this one's probably going to be a 4 or a 4.5 stars for me. So yeah just wanted to give you a quick update on The Near Witch and I will finish the short story today or tomorrow probably tomorrow and then update you on what I thought of that as well. Hi, it's time for an update. It is Thursday evening. I have literally just walked in from work. It's six, nearly half six in the evening and I finished at four but I work quite far away from home and I went shopping after work um, to get a few bits. I went to get some food and I also went to Body Shop because they sent me a voucher code the other day and I needed a few um, things like shampoo and conditioner which I usually buy from there. Um, I also bought some books from work. I work in Waterstones and I bought some books after work. I've been like stocking some up and I had some books to return. 
So yeah, I'm going to show you those things in a minute. <laughs> um, but first, I'm just going to give you a quick update on my reading. I finished The New Witch last night, like the whole book. I think the last time I updated you, I'd finished the main story, but I hadn't read the short story at the end. I say short, it was like 50 pages. I was called The Ashbourne Boy, and I read it like midnight, and I don't really remember what it was about, other than the fact that it was about um, a market. Um, and I remember it being quite emotional, but I honestly felt like, because it was so short, I couldn't get a massive connection to the characters. But I did enjoy it. I really enjoyed The Near Witch. I really, really enjoyed it. I thought that was really good. I'd love to reread it at some point when I'm not reading two other fantasy books alongside it. I also have read Warstorm today, which is my audiobook at the moment. So I've read a lot while I've been driving today. Really, really enjoying that as well. Um, I'm finding after running yesterday, I was just able to focus on it a little bit more and I'm feeling a little bit more engaged with the story than I was a couple of days ago and I know more about what's going on now. So that's really good. So those are my current reading updates. Now I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna show you what I got from Body Shop because why not? I got some nice stuff. So I topped up on my shampoo, which is strawberry. This is for glossy hair, which I really, really love the strawberry. I also had a really nice chat with the woman in there about um, the fact that they're going to be trying to make all of their ranges vegan, which is really exciting. This is vegan. I also got the Shea Butter Conditioner because they ran out of strawberry conditioner. And I also found like, this is quite a good balance because this is for dry hair and this is to make your hair glossy. So I'd like using them together. So I got the Shea. I also got some mango um bath blend i've been using the berry one and really really liking it so this is just like bubble bath so i thought i'd try the mango one and i got some body yogurt so i got the mango and the strawberry one will stay here and one will go to my boyfriend's because i've been running out of both places so i'm not sure which yet but i am excited to try the body yogurt also they have a vegan stamp on both of them as well um so yeah very excited for those now I'm going to show you the books I got from work. So as I said, I had some re returns that I cancelled an order over lockdown and they still sent it to me even though the website said it was cancelled. So I ended up with two copies of Chain of Iron that I didn't need because I had ordered the tour editions for me and Courtney. Um, so I didn't need those, so I returned those. I returned a book that I thought was different and it turned up and it was something else. And I returned a book from Christmas that me and my brother both bought for my mom. So obviously she didn't need both, so I returned one of those. So I had some returns, I had £10 on my Waterstones card and I had a voucher that Courtney very kindly gave me the other day. So this entire bag, not including, sorry, including Courtney's copy of A Court of Silver Flames, which isn't in this bag, cost me £2.46, which I was very happy about. So I'm going to just show you what I got. So first one I got which I put aside for myself the other day when I was shelving because I spotted it and I noticed it was the last one that we had in stock of the signed Waterstones exclusive edition. Also this sounds amazing and I've been seeing it everywhere. This is the Gilded Ones and this is the Waterstones exclusive edition that has the gold foiling on the front which I think the normal edition has some gold foiling but not all of this decorative stuff and it has a gold spine, and it has these spray pages, and it is signed. Um, don't know where the signature is. Oh, it has like a, a sticker on the front. Very, very excited to read this one. I also bought the paperback of House of Earth of Blood because it is beautiful, even though I haven't read this yet. We know all of it because it's Sarah J Mars. In fact, the rest of the books in this bag are Sarah J Mars books. On brand. So the other one I got was, I'm trying to get these out of the bag, my Waterstones edition of A Court of Silver Flames, which I have been waiting on for a while. Um, so this is, maybe it's not the Waterstones edition of A Court of Silver Flames. Oh here it is, there we go. I couldn't find the signature page and I panicked a bit then. This is the special first edition signed that also has, as far as I know, a special bonus chapter in the back of it, so quite excited for that. Yeah, so this is an exclusive behind the scenes sneak peek at what some of your favourite characters were up to off the page. So this is the Waterstones exclusive edition, this is the final copy I've been waiting on 
to add to my collection so I'm very happy because I ordered these to the store so we had to wait for them to come in after we reopened and then the last two things in this bag our last three things in this bag are some throne of glass hardbacks I know these are really random but essentially I decided that I wanted to collect the hardback set I have the paperback the white set of the paperbacks I decided to get the hardbacks I've also bought the dust jackets off nerdy ink which is partly why I wanted to get these um and I found out I could get them through work which is very helpful these were the ones that were just available like at the time and then we've had to order the others from the publisher so hopefully they'll come soon but these are beautiful <laughs> I'm so happy I'm so so happy so we've got the first one the last one and then the short stories so very random collection of throne of Glass books oh my god kingdom of ash though I can't stop looking at because it it's got like a shimmer to it but the others are like matte and then the this is shimmery so beautiful and under the dust jacket of this one there's a signature I love it anyway if you thought it was done you're wrong we also have some post that came while I was out we have my COVID-19 um self-testing kits very exciting we also have also if you're in the in England you can order up to seven of these per household per day or per person per day I'm not quite sure so that's appreciated and I thought while I'm working and I'm not vaccinated they're probably a good thing to do and just see how I go with them I also have this package from Waterstones because I did an order last week which has in it the Deep Sea Duke by Lauren James which I'm very excited to read this is the sequel to the Starlight Watchmaker which is another Barrington Stoke book Barrington Stoke if you didn't know are a dyslexia friendly publisher so this is a dyslexia friendly novella for teens so I'm very very excited to read this I really enjoyed the Starlight Watchmaker and I've read everything pretty much by Lauren James the last thing we have is this box which I actually have no idea what is in it but I thought you know let's open it on camera because it could be something exciting it could be not but we'll find out I feel like this is a dangerous way to open this parcel but we're fine I've just seen where this is from and I know what it is now and I'm very happy I didn't expect it to come in a such a big box, but it kind of makes sense. This has a lot of packaging. <laughs> okay. This is the American 10th anniversary paperback of Daughter of Smoke and Bone by Lainey Taylor. I've actually not read anything of Lainey Taylor's, but I've recently been purchasing some of her books and I really really wanted these beautiful 10th anniversary editions but they are as I said they're the American editions and I think I've just scored a line in one of them which kind of sucks oh no these are really really pretty so this is the complete gift set which I've gifted to myself this is actually a really nice box anyway how pretty on these covers I have scored a line in that that's really sad but oh well I don't know what next door we're doing but if you can hear that banging that's next door so so beautiful oh my god I love them so yeah I wasn't gonna buy these and then I saw I had the tab open for a couple of days and it went from being like more than 10 in stock to being like three in stock and I was like I'm gonna just get them while I can get them because I knew I wanted these editions I would also say if there is something you are struggling to get in the UK because it's an American edition try Blackwell's because they do tend to stock American editions of books for like a limited time around the release um so they're definitely somewhere to check out they also have a marketplace so if they don't have stock of it themselves they like might have stock of it from somewhere else or second hand such a beautiful set i'm so happy that i have these so yeah i'm now surrounded by books <laughs> i hope you enjoyed this very very long section of this vlog i do apologize that this has gone on for a while i need to stop talking now but that is what i have bought today ah 
there's so many books that I don't have space for. And I'm just, I mean, I'm only adding four to my TBR, even though there's a lot in this. Three of them are these, and the other is um, the Gilded Ones, because I've already read Throne of Glass and A Court of Silver Flames, and I already have an edition of House of Earth and Blood. So, two editions of House of Earth and Blood. So I'm only adding to four to my TBR, even though I've bought more than that, a lot more than that. But I'm still panic. Oh, hang on. Five to my TBR. I'm gonna go now and have some dinner and do some ring fit and film a video and do other stuff. Very busy evening ahead of me. And then I will probably update you tomorrow now, honestly, because yeah. <laughs> I have taught for too long, so I'm probably gonna update you tomorrow. See you soon. It's Friday, um, it's nearly 5pm so it's kind of like evening now, I just thought I'd give you an update. I've been busy today, I wanted to do an update earlier but yeah, it's been busy. Um, so basically I went for a run this morning, when I first woke up I ran for an hour, so I ran quite far and then I did the washing, <laughs> changed the sheets on my bed, did some chores, made some brownies, I also did a Covid test because in the UK now, you can now order COVID tests to be delivered to your house. So I did that and I thought I would just talk a little bit about that because I feel like it's important. Unfortunately, the COVID tests do produce a lot of waste and I kind of do see the problem in that a lot. But I want to do them for my peace of mind while I'm back at work and I'm not vaccinated because I am spending a lot of time around people and that's not my choice and that's not something I can really avoid. I feel like there's this big thing for me that's avoidance risk. It's like if you can avoid putting yourself or other people at risk you do it. But for me I can't really avoid being at work so I have to do it so therefore I put myself at risk more than I would if I was at home. So I do want some kind of reassurance in the fact that I'm not picking anything up from there. So that's how I kind of feel about that um, and why I'm doing these COVID tests. The plan is at the moment to try and do them twice a week, at least until I get vaccinated, which hopefully will be in a couple of months time, depending on how the vaccine program keeps going in the UK. So the COVID test that you get to your house is quite complicated. There are so many little bits that I didn't expect um, that you have to put the stuff in and like, essentially you have like a a little thing with liquid in and you put that in another little thing like a little vial thing and then you have to have the swab and you stick that swab down your throat like you try not to get it to touch any other part of your mouth your tongue your gums nothing it has to just go straight down your throat where your tonsils are or would be and then you so you do that and you kind of twiddle it around there for a bit and then you stick the same swab up your nose I thought that was the other way around but luckily it's not so it's a little bit better than I expected. It's uncomfortable, but it's not necessarily painful. It made me sneeze and it made my eyes water a bit, made me cry a bit, but I wouldn't say it's painful. It's just uncomfortable a little bit, but it was fine. And then you then take the swab and you put that swab in the little vial of liquid, try and get all the stuff off it. And then you pour that the stuff from that vial onto a test strip, which then tells you within half an hour if you have. Covid or not, can confirm I am Covid free, which is nice to know and to be reassured about. So yeah, so I did that today. And then I had a class all afternoon, so that's what I've been doing. And now I'm just making caramel to go on these brownies. So caramel's bubbling away, making vegan caramel, um, because hopefully I'm seeing Blue and Alex tomorrow and we're going to have a picnic, so I'm making brownies for us, which is nice. So yeah, that's my day so far. Um, so yeah, as I said, it's now five. So I'm gonna I'm gonna hopefully film some videos now, and then I've got some exciting stuff planned. And then I am going to have dinner and maybe have a bath tonight. That is the plan. Yeah. Anyway, I'm gonna go and do this, and I might update you later today, 
or tomorrow with how things are going but i'll probably try and update you later at least a little bit because i haven't read anything today i have read i'm actually now more than halfway through warstorm because i've been listening to it and i listened to it on my run this morning because i ran for an hour i managed to listen to quite a lot of it so yeah i am half read today i am quite enjoying warstorm actually i feel like the more i'm reading it the more i'm enjoying it so that's nice but yeah so I've read some of Warstorm. I need to read today's pages of A Reaper at the Gates and then I might update you later. So I will see you then. So as you guys know, I'm currently reading A Reaper at the Gates. So I'm doing a body read of this book with Alex from Alex's Books. I will link her channel in the description below. So essentially, when we do buddy reads, we decide how many days we want to read the book over and then divide the page number by that amount of days and then find the nearest chapters to the page count each day and then we tab the books. I don't know if you can really see these tabs because I've used the ones that are similar colour to the pages, but um, we're reading this over seven days, so there's tabs in for every day. <laughs> Now, essentially, I've been reading this the past few days and I've been quite busy and I'm also, I've been reading three fantasy books at the same time, but I finished The Near Witch the other night, so I've just been reading two the past couple of days. But anyway, I have started to feel like yesterday that I was just too far ahead because I didn't feel like I had enough pages left because I knew that, I thought that we were finishing this on Sunday and I was right. I asked Alex, I was like, when are we finished in this? And she said Sunday. So after a lot of confusion, what I decided to do was I was like, okay, I'm a section ahead and I don't know how it's happened. I'm meant to be getting to here tonight, but the way I'm going, I was going to get to the final tab, meaning I only had one day left. So what I did was I went back to every single tab and read a little bit in that section to see if I remembered it, because the only way this could have happened is I've either missed an entire section or I've read two sections in one day and I'm pretty damn sure I haven't read two sections in one day because I feel like I would have remembered reading that much of this book in one day as I'm so used to reading like 60 pages. Um, so I went back and I found that from 199, which is here, to 263, I don't really remember what's happened, so I think I just missed a section one day. I honestly don't know how I didn't realise when I went into the next one because stuff must have not really made sense. The only way I can kind of describe it is because one, I've been reading more than one fantasy at a time, I often will be reading a book, a different book, in between the sections so I get a little bit confused and it takes me a little bit to get back into the book anyway. So I think part of it is just I've put it down to like getting used to the book again when in reality I skipped a section. Or the other thing is um, because this is in a lot of different points of view you often spend like 40-50 pages without seeing one character. So I think maybe I've just started reading a new, like a different character's point of view and thought, oh, something must have happened that I don't quite remember or um, or just kind of glossed over it. Um, and I have been like really busy and tired this week, so that's probably another reason. And I've been reading my pages late at night. So anyway, what I've decided to do after much confusion is go back and read the middle section today and maybe finish this one because I'm halfway through this section right now. And then read this one over the weekend, the last section. So we'll probably still be a little bit ahead. But yeah, right now I'm just halfway through the section that I missed. So I'm about here and I need to read to here tonight. And then I can carry on from where I was. But yeah, this is just really, really weird because I don't know how it's happened. But anyway, we'll get there. It's also funny because like, I've, I've got to a point where like big stuff has happened during these pages that I should probably know for the rest of the story. It does kind of make sense to why this has been a little bit confusing so far. Anyway, I'm tired of rambling so I'm going to go now and read these pages.
Hi, it's Saturday morning and I just thought I'd give you a quick reading update. So it's about half ten and uh, I've already finished A Reaper at the Gates this morning. I had a very, very weird experience reading this book as I explained to you last night. I realised about here that I'd skipped a section of the book. Now the weirdest thing is I don't feel like I was very confused. But I feel like the I was just no more confused than I already was. <laughs> I feel like I've read this in a bit of a daze, honestly. I think part of that is because I've gone back to work this week and I think part of that is because I've been reading three fantasy books at once, which I would not recommend. Um, and I think because of that I already felt a little bit confused by this book. And also there is just so many characters and so many points of view that like I think I just thought that I'd not miss somebody's point of view, but like because it had been a while since their last one. <laughs> I just thought I'd been a bit thrown by that. So I think I did find this one through me a bit, but it was my own fault. <laughs> so I went back yesterday and read the bit in the middle that I'd missed, which was about 60 pages. But when you look at it, it's only like one person's point of view, not one. It's everybody's point of view, but once, if that makes sense. So I was only skipping like one chapter from each person. It's very difficult to explain. But anyway, stuff happened in that. 60 pages that was like really integral to the story and it makes sense to why I felt a little bit confused going on and once I'd read that I definitely found that the rest of the book made a lot more sense so I read the last um, of yesterday's or today's section because I ended up a day ahead and then this morning I read the last section and finished it but yeah I think I might read a summary of this before I finish before I start the last one just because I want to make sure I didn't miss anything in my very very weird way of reading it. I've never felt I've never done that before reading a book and I don't really know what's happened other than that I think I'm a bit my brain is a bit mushy this week but I still enjoyed it I just found it very yeah I just I feel like there's too much going on um, like I feel like all of these characters, although they are linked in some way, they have very different stories and therefore you're constantly having to change your mindset and I found it quite jumpy anyway, disregarding all of the stuff that happened when I read it. Um, so yeah, I didn't enjoy it quite as much as the first two, but I have high hopes for the last one, especially if I managed to read a little bit of a, um summary and make sure I actually know what is happening before I move into the last one. So it's going to be a bit of a difficult one to review because as I said I think it's completely like on me um, and don't read three fantasies at once guys. Um, so I did pick up a third book last night but I made sure it was a contemporary. This is Autobiography by Christina Lauren. I've had this on my TBR for a while and I picked out of my TBR jar recently and I thought that's great because it's contemporary, I can read it alongside other things easily. This one I am enjoying so far, I got to page 44 last night I believe, I think, yeah I got to page 40, 45 last night. This is about a guy called Tanner who is living in, well, he's in a high school and he's kind of living in an area that's very Mormon. I found it really interesting because there's a lot of mentions of everybody being Mormon which I don't think you get a lot of in YA and because of that he has kind of not come out to his friends they have not lived in the town that they're living in for very long so he used to be very like out and proud and now he's moved to this place and he's very kind of in the closet again um, and then he meets a guy who is like the TA for a class that he's in like a mentor who's come in to help them out and he's wondering whether he wants to stay in the closet anymore basically it's very much like Georgia Peaches and Other Forbidden Fruit very much reminds me of that but from a guy's point of view and obviously there is there is also the fact that he's writing a book for a class and in that class there's this TA I am enjoying it so far I'm glad I picked this one up rather than another fantasy because I think yeah my mind's just been confused and I do think maybe I should stick to contemporaries for a little bit or at least um make sure that my second or third read is a contemporary so anyway I'm gonna go now and see Blue and Alex outside for a picnic which I'm very very excited for really excited to see them both and I'm gonna be listening to Warstorm on the way and hopefully I can 
um, managed to get that straight in my head. Although I am finding that I, I have managed to grasp a little bit more of what's going on recently. So I can listen to that for an hour in the car. So I'm going to go and do that and I'll probably update you tonight. Welcome to the end of the vlog. I'm gonna wrap this vlog up now just because I am just at work tomorrow so I'm probably not gonna get much reading done or anything even though it's the weekend but then I have five days off work so it's going to be busy but then I'll have some days off. Um, but anyway I've just got back, literally just got back from seeing Blue and Alex which has been so lovely. We luckily also had really nice weather so we could just sit in Alex's garden without worrying about it and it was just absolutely lovely and warm enough and really nice and we all played Mahjong together which I've never played and Alex and her mum wanted to play it with us and that was great and I really enjoyed it and we had some food and stuff so it was really nice um and also <laughs> Blue and Alex gave me some books so I thought I'd finish this with a bit of an, a haul um They've been keeping these books for me for a while because obviously we haven't really been able to see each other. So yeah, Alex gave me two, three books and Blue gave me their spare copy of A Vow So Bold and Deadly because they had a standard edition and the Warstones edition and they couldn't cancel this one because it was part of a bigger order so they ended up just passing the standard edition on to me because I wasn't too bothered so I finally got this full set which is exciting I think me and Alex are gonna buddy read this this year hopefully Alex also gave me the first book to the Poppy War which I am very very excited for so I think she bought the fairy loot set and already had this in paperback so she decided to pass this on to me so very much thank you Alex she also gave me the Ark of the Cousins which I really really love this arc and unfortunately didn't manage to get one because by the time I requested one from work they sent me the normal paperback which I might have talked about the other day I don't remember if I mentioned that but I love this arc and Alex told me a long time ago that um she wanted the complete version and didn't mind me having it so that is why I've ended up with this as well which I will probably end up keeping because I do really like this on the cover <laughs> really like this and the last thing Alex gave me, which I'm very overwhelmed about, is the Fairy Loot edition of Lore, which is absolutely beautiful because Alex has a Fairy Loot subscription and she wasn't so bothered about reading this at the moment anyway, so she's passed this on to me. I actually have mixed feelings about this edition because I do really like the original design on the cover, so um yeah i do have mixed feelings on this but honestly this spine is gorgeous the sprayed edges are really really nice and i do really still like this edition um also it's really beautiful underneath and it has a quote on the spine so yeah i'm really excited for this and hopefully i will get to it soon i've heard really really good things about it so thank you very much to blue and alex for this small haul i also bought this card while i was out because it's so cute and me and my lovely friend Sophie have been writing to each other and become pen pals recently so I got this card to send to her. So that is the end of this video. I do hope you've enjoyed this kind of five day long vlog of me being back at work and back to kind of more normal life and my absolute chaotic reading at the moment. I hope you have enjoyed hearing about my weird um, random stuff that's going on. And yeah, if you did, please give it a like and comment down below. Tell me if you enjoyed this vlog and please subscribe to the channel if you want to see more videos like this. And I'll see you next time. Bye.